As a video creator, you want to publish as many videos as you can while maintaining the highest production values that you possibly can. This is accomplished by using a workflow. I'm going to be interviewing Trina Little, who is the manager at the Video Creator Channel with Tim Schmoyer. She's going to share with you the top YouTube workflows that they use to grow their channel to over half a million subscribers. I'm Owen Video, and you're watching YouTube Insider. What are the systems and the processes that will help take your channel from where it is now to where you want it to be? I'm talking with Trina Little, who runs the channel over at Video Creator. What are the systems that every YouTube creator needs to have now to get to the next step in their channel? You have to have a video workflow. We call it a workflow so we know exactly what needs to be done when. You may not have the time to spend eight, 10 hours on YouTube a day. So when, you're, when you have an hour before you're running to your next meeting because this is your side hustle, how can you easily jump right back into where you left off without wasting time oh. trying to figure out, all right, where did I leave off? This yeah. is gonna save you so much time. So having a checklist, your pre-flight checklist, your workflow in place just really condenses that time to get a video live. Yeah. We're so used to seeing Tim and the character, the personal side of the channel, mm -hmm. but you're actually running the back end side yeah. of the channel. This is the video creator channel with Tim Schmoyer. He was the very first YouTuber I ever started following. That led me to Daryl Eves and Bit Summit right. and the whole creation there. But you run the show there. Tell, tell us a little bit about what your role is mm -hmm. there. I basically take Tim's ideas, video ideas, process to uploading, optimizing, and promoting that video. So really determining which videos we want to tackle uh, and how we're going to basically produce that. What's the content going to be? What's the thumbnail going to look like? What's the hook going to be? What's the script? And then to get through the full process to eventually publishing for all of you to see. So a lot of times it can be very difficult to stay consistent. There's yeah. a lot of things going on. I'm a mom to two small children, so there's a lot going on at my house. And so what I learned early on was there needed to be a process so that I wasn't wasting time repeating the same things over and over. Yeah. So it basically started with a checklist, kind of systemizing that in a project management tool. Yeah. I've used Trello and now I'm on Asana and just getting that set up so you can track everything together so you're not constantly repeating yourself and doing the same thing over and over. What are the big workflows that you use in Asana to, to mm -hmm. keep the channel organized? So I set up my Asana in different columns. So when it's in column one, let's say that's the research phase. I'm taking the video idea and figuring out what direction are we going to take this video? What's the strategy for that piece of content? Because yeah. just an idea doesn't really help us figure out what direction we're going to take it. Uh, so I'll do the research and then I keep all the research on that card as well yeah. so that I can come back to it um, when I'm jumping in and out as I need to because I will also batch time. So if I'm researching this day, then I can easily get back in the next day yeah. and figure out, okay, now what are we going to title this before we even script it? So then the next column will be uh, scripting the content, then we move over to thumbnail idea, then we move just the process from A, a to Z basically. How much time do you put into research mm -hmm. and how do you sort of boil it all down because I can do research and it's like, now I got three pages of notes and it's like, yeah. I don't even know what to do with the three pages of notes now. So how do you manage yeah. that? So Tim will give me like a general idea. And from there, I'll take a look at what's doing well on YouTube. And more importantly, we look at what went well on his channel. Did oh, really? he do this video before? What's the audience retention graph looked? there. What did we do there that we could do better based on the audience retention graph? What was that thumbnail? What was that thumbnail's click-through rate? What was that title? So my research is kind of a lot on the back end of his channel to see how we can make it better the second time around or what's a different position that we can take than what's on YouTube right now. Now, how do you take a separate position on, on a topic without contradicting yourself? Uh, come from a different angle, not just, so like, let's say how to create thumbnails that are click worthy. Yeah. Maybe one time we talked about, you know, graphics of it. And this time we're talking about whether text is right or not for your thumbnail and what position you should take on text or what position you should take on branding or what position you should take on the title and the thumbnail and how those go together. So yeah. just nuances. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So how much time do you spend researching a topic? Yeah. Um, I like to set a timer for about 30 to 45 minutes for each video. Otherwise you're just going to keep going down a hole and you're going to look at the clock and be like, crap. 
five yeah. hours later yeah. and you're not getting anything done because you can research forever, but you need to move on. And talk to me about like that 40 minutes of time. Like mm -hmm. what's step one, step two, step mm -hmm. three, step four, and then it's doom, it's 40 minutes. Yeah, so I'll go into YouTube first. Let's see what's showing up, uh, what people are talking about, how they're opening their videos, what position are they taking on that topic? Then I go into Tim's videos and I see, have we done this at all before? And what did the audience retention look like? How did the audience engage with it? What were the comments that were posted on that video? And can we answer some of those questions in this wow, video? Wow, yeah, that's big, that's big. Mm -hmm. What about production? What's the biggest system that you work with in the production side that's helped you to get your channel to the next level? So I get everything ready for Tim and then I will just notify him, hey, these videos are ready to shoot and Tim will batch. Uh, and then he will go ahead and get those uploaded into a Dropbox and our editor will start editing. I will advise her on what I need changed, uh, what, how to edit it, maybe what social media clips we want pulled out. Does Tim get the whole concept for the video or just kind of like, hey Tim, we need you to say this? Yeah, I write a script for him. Okay. So Tim's on Trello. So I basically write the script in our card for that particular channel so that he can pull it up. I will give a summary and maybe bullet points so he can grift on it and yeah. give his own position on it. Uh, can you share the format that you guys use for a mm -hmm. script like that? Yeah, so we have the hook. Obviously, that's the most important. We have to grab their attention How in the long? first three to five seconds. And then one of the keys I've really been working with is determining what's the call to action for that video? What video are we gonna send them to next? So yeah. we can prove to YouTube, hey, we're a bingeable channel, so we can start getting more suggestions in the browse features and suggested. Yeah, but talk to us about the content. Is it like a three bullet point structure? Mm -hmm. Is it like a, a story arc? Mm -hmm. um, you know, when does the story end and when does the call to action begin? Tim has been testing some things. We have the new uh, Creator Story series on okay. his channel, which is more storytelling. We take a story of a creator. A lot of the educational content will follow that structured tips or steps so that it's easy to consume. It's easy for you to follow and have a win at the end of that video. So you feel, wow, this was super helpful. I need to watch another one from this person. How about the, the end of the video? You've reached the climax, the pinnacle point of your video, but you still want people watching for another mm -hmm. 30 seconds, 45 seconds. Yeah. How do you guys frame that? We will focus on delivering content until basically the last 10 seconds because those thumb, those uh, click throughs, those end screens are those last 20 seconds. Yeah. So we're focusing on delivering content up until the last 10 seconds so that the end screen can show up and then we will have that call to action relating to the video that we they're watching. What should they watch next? What is the viewer's journey? What yeah. makes sense for that next step in that viewer's journey? Yeah, okay. So Tim handles like the videographer part of it and the camera work yep, part all of at it. his house. And you've got B-roll and sort of cutaways and, and yeah. that sort of thing. Does your editing company just handle that? Yeah. Like what does that look like? Julia, who is Tim's editor, is amazing and she's been with Tim longer than I am. Oh, so yeah. she has a lot of customized animations and she kind of has the structure built out as it is. So she adds all that stuff in for so us. So you don't have to go through the script and sort of highlight it and no, say. No, she, she's learned Tim's process yeah. and she knows. And then I will watch it and say, hey, maybe we need this change or maybe we need to zoom in here if there's any edits I need. Tell me about a, a contractor or a vendor that you did have to train mm -hmm. to kind of get them doing things your way. Yeah, I have my own channel and I've been working with an editor to kind of get her to know me. Yeah. So one thing that we've done is create a bucket or a folder of B-roll footage that we can use more than once. Yeah. So I can always just link to that. Uh, I like to use GIFs a lot. And yeah. so having a bucket or a folder of GIFs she can easily pull from. It's actually, it's pronounced GIF. GIF. Just, so <laughs> what is it, GIF or GIF? I wanna know, put a J or a G in the comment section and let us, and let us know. So you're training your editor. Yes. And she's getting there. I mean, it's going to take time. The more you can give the editor, the more instructions and breakdown you can give them, the quicker they're going to get there. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and we're getting to the point, This our video this week is the first time that she did it all on her own oh, without wonderful. my feedback. And that's so great. It's been probably about seven months working together, but we, I think, are there. We'll see what the analytics okay, say. Okay, now, now let's let's talk about that. Like, they, they have it all together. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe your vision is 100% and what they did is like, uh, let's say 70%. Like mm -hmm. at one point for you, do you say, no, that's close enough. You have to get out of your head. Perfection is a mindset that you just have to get over. I teach a lot of my students that too. Like perfect is not done and you just need to get it out. And there are so many things, like you said, your audience might not even notice. So you have to get out of your head and not worry about everything being perfect because perfect's not gonna happen. Uh, what are the most important systems that mm -hmm. YouTube creators should be implementing into their YouTube business mm -hmm. right away? I think I think what you really need to be doing to 
prepare your video for success is really knowing what you're going to be doing before you shoot that video. Know what that title and thumbnail is going to be before you even craft the hook. Wow. Because you need to make sure that hook really ties in to your title and thumbnail if you want to get people to keep watching. Otherwise, if that hook isn't tied in to the title and thumbnail, they're gone. And the whole key on YouTube is to keep people watching. I would say, what, are you, what can you promise them that they're going to want to keep watching? What can be that piece that keeps them watching that you also promised in the title and the thumbnail, right? The title and the thumbnail really needs to pitch a value, a reason to watch your video. Then you need to kind of solidify that, promise them in the first five seconds, this is what you're going to get. So they're not like, well, are they gonna get to this right. point? Or when does the content start? Right. What do you say to the creative thinker um, who is, is hearing us say things like structure and is, is Xing out of the video? Set up systems, I know it's hard, but you're going to get more efficient and you're gonna see better results. If you can do the same things over and over, you can then go in and see what did work, what didn't work, critique it, and YouTube can be a grind sometimes. And to make it less of a grind is to have a process in place so you so, always know when to. So big, subscribers versus customers. Yes. Right, What what is that all about? Yes, so I can't control AdSense. I wanna control as much revenue as possible because if I wanna hit a button and pull it on full throttle. I can't do that with AdSense, but if I wanna do that in my business, I know if one video drives me, let's keep the math simple because I'm not a math wizard. Yeah. One video drives me 10 leads. If I wanna then get to 100 leads, 10 more videos. And so that's where I can really pull the lever is knowing what my videos are converting to my business. Where do uh, YouTube creators fail in, in systemizing and, and proceduralizing their content, their, their channel? Just not doing it. Like you think I have, oh, I have a notebook with my checklist or I have a whiteboard. But if you want to get to a point where you're outsourcing, even if you're bringing in an assist, a, assistant, they don't have access to your notebook. They don't have access to your whiteboard. You've got to get it digital and you've got to get some kind of process process in place if you you get to that point where you need to bring someone on to help you to crank out more content. So just getting, even if it's maybe five steps that you go through every single time, that's a start. Coming up with that checklist isn't easy and it isn't fast because you've got to think about all those nuanced steps. If you couldn't do it, what's every single step somebody needed to do to get your video live? So just take some time, block a day, or a few hours to just write everything down. You know, that's so big. YouTube creators and business leaders, thought leaders, we rarely stop yeah. to just do the groundwork and lay mm -hmm. the foundation of the channel. Because most of the time you're like, well, what's the ROI on this? Well, if you can get this system in place, you can put more videos out who drive you more leads, drive you more revenue. So do you have a, a PDF guide or, or mm -hmm. some type of, of format that we can use to start systemizing our channel? Yeah, I have a video strategy workbook that kind of breaks down everything I do to set up my channel and then also gives you all the dimensions for all the social platforms wow. because I like to maximize my video reach to get in front of more people. And so I have that all broken down print it off, lay it down by your desk so that you can just easily see, okay, this video needs to be reformatted to this size for this platform. That's cool. So go grab that, guys. We'll put a link on the screen and we'll put a link in the description box. And I appreciate you, Trina, coming yeah. down and spending some time with us today. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely, guys. Go check out her channel. Stay in touch with Owen Video. We got tons more coming up on YouTube. <laughs>